Hello everybody, this is Maniac Falego, and we are here today with set number 76004, Spider-Man Spider-Cycle Chase. This is a Marvel superhero set from 2013. Ages 6 to 12, 237 pieces, 3 minifigures, one of, actually two of them being exclusive to this set. And this retailed originally for $20. Uh, not really sure if you can find this in stores anymore. And I do apologize if I sound stuffy. I just have a little bit of allergies to take care of. I do also apologize if I've already done a review of this set. Let me know in the comments below if I have. So I will be sure to take down this review if this one is a duplicate. I wasn't sure if I did this set and I wanted to do this review again just to be car just to be sure about it. Because I meant to do another review. I don't know if I did this one though. So let's take a closer look at the set now. So here we have the box art for the set. Looks pretty good. Um, just to get through it real quick, we have the Marvel Super Heroes logo on top. It shows Spider-Man on the side. Ultimate Spider-Man on the bottom because it's somewhat based on the TV show. I don't know for a fact though, so don't... Um, you can correct me on that in the comments. But I haven't seen the TV show, so I can't say as far as its accuracy. We also have on this side, Comic Adventure included. And the three characters with their names underneath them. Very nice that they include the names so you can recognize them. And you get to see them in their full minifigure form. As we turn around to the back, you get to see some of the play features of the set. Um, which aren't many, but it's still good, in my opinion, the way they're designed. But we'll get into that in just a little bit. You can also see we have... A nifty looking instruction manual. It's also a good box size for $20, roughly. Um, most $20 sets are of this size, and so are the instructions. This is a numbered set with, let me show you in the beginning. They show you bag one contains Spider Man, Venom, Venom's little creature things. I'm not really sure what they're called. Um, we also got Spider Man and his motorcycle. And then, bag two contains Nick Fury and his shield car. Very nice. You also get the nice little blue background in here. Kind of a nice appearance for that comic book look. We also have a piece count on the back that stretches across two pages. We also have a section for the Lego Club and the wind section on the back. As far as the bags go, here they are. Like I said before, there were three bags. Oh, I think Nick's Fury's car is built in bag two and three. That's something I probably missed while looking in the instructions. I'm not sure. Because now I'm looking through the instructions page by page, and I don't see a bag three. Maybe it was from something else. But anyways, we got a small sticker sheet. There's only four stickers in the set, which is good. And they're all easy to place on. We got some small bags. We also got some larger bags. I don't know why there's a third bag in here, though. It must have been from another set. So now, let's go on to the comic book. Okay, everyone, I was actually wrong. There was supposed to be a third bag in there. And it shows it right there. You build up to here with bag two. And then you build the rest of it from bag three. Sorry about that. Now let's get to the comic. So here we have our very small Marvel comic book. It's not really something that most people look forward to when it comes to these sets because they know it's kind of cheap and, you know, it doesn't have a lot to offer. But personally, I think it's an okay thing to have because it's superheroes and superheroes are associated with comics a lot. So it's very cool to get it in a set instead of just getting the set itself. You know, we got this little couple pages of, you know, action, and I don't really mind that there isn't much text in this, because usually they keep this for, you know, international purposes, so you don't have to worry about too much, you know, language translations. So what we have in here are sections incorporating some of the Marvel sets from this time. They show both of them simultaneously. You get a couple sound effects in here that are put as words, as well as drawings. Very nice drawings in here, I think. Like, 
it makes, like, they even make Venom's little, um, tentacles, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but I'll say tentacles for right now, and make them seem like it's a part of him, instead of being, like, an attachment as a minifigure. You can see a little bit more in there. You know, they do a really good job with the drawing and design of this, in my opinion. Nice little story for younger kids to, you know, to read along and, you know, have fun with it. Maybe even play with the sets in a similar way as a story. I know I used to do that with some of the LEGO comics that were in the LEGO magazine itself. Now on the back, on the back we get to see some of the Marvel superheroes from this time and also the ones from the year before. A lot of them from, you know, some from X-Men, a lot of them from Avengers, some from Spider-Man. So very nice to see those collections. And now let's get on to the set. I've almost neglected to, uh, to include all the extra pieces that are in this set. You can recognize all of them here. We got some teeth pieces, some cheese wedges, your one by ones, kind of your standard stuff um, that would be included for extra pieces. One by one in green. We got some Technic pins across here and different colors and different um, uses. So here we have a look at Spider-Man. This is the ultimate Spider-Man as shown in the TV show. It's pretty much a modern version that's been used in a lot of different LEGO sets. I have the original version around here, but I don't have all of his details. Just as a quick comparison, I'll just move him to the side. This is the first version that was made in LEGO, and is the first version made for the Spider-Man movie. And this one's a more modern one. Basically has the same variation in a lot of different sets. This one has only been available in maybe two or three. Maybe four sets. In and out of any arm printing. And the reason why this one has a bracket is because the set he was included in had some features with him crawling along the wall and, you know, using his web. So, he has a bracket on the back of there. He's also been very faded. I'll just take that off. So I do apologize for the faded look on him. And then we have the back of our newer Spidey. Looks okay between the two. Um, I just prefer like a not not as much blue. Like the red one looks a little bit better to me. Um, but I still like the details that are shown on this version. At least because it's newer and just you know a little bit more carefully detailed throughout the minifigure. So, there we have a look at Spider-Man. Next minifigure we have is Venom. Now, this version of Venom is only in two sets um, since the recording of this video, and this is the more expensive way to get him, but it doesn't get any more expensive than, you know, in a $20 set. The cheaper way is, I think, 13 10 I, I don't remember exactly. Correct me in the comments. It might even be 20 still. I don't remember exactly, but I know it's in a junior set. Same variation. He's got some very nice detail on him. I don't mind him having black pants and no printing on it, because it really doesn't it doesn't really call for it since he's a dark figure on his own. On the back of him, we have an attachment, and this has a couple different like vines or tentacles. I'm not sure exactly what they're called because I'm not familiar with the figure, but you can take these off like that, and each of these can also come off on their own. It's a nice clip on the on the back of him. We could take off the bracket piece and you could see the back of his torso. Very nice looking. Kind of like the front one though. Except just, you know, lesser details. Because it's on the back. This fits right on the back of him very easily. And you could also move these around to a bunch of different designs to make some added effects, make him crawling, but still have his hands free for action. You can even stand him up like this. And then our last minifigure of this set is Nick Fury. He's definitely the most exclusive of the figures in this, in this set, and one of the reasons people really like this set. Um, personally, I'm not trying to collect all the Avengers figures, but I did like getting this to add along to my Avengers collection. I think I already have, I'm only missing Black Widow, and maybe, you know, if you want to count the other variations of Iron Man, um, and the Hulk, yeah, missing those, but he's still a nice figure to get for a $20 set, 
Um, definitely a likable one, you know, not only because of the Avengers, but because of Marvel itself, you know, just well known. He's got some good detail on him, very nice printing on his torso. Again, I don't mind for the pants, because I didn't really consider that there would be any pants printing. I also don't care that he doesn't have a cape, because I know sometimes he comes with a big cape. Um, he looks a little bit better to me without the cape and just with the torso. I like how on his head, the eye patch is ha has printing on the back of it. So it continues around the back, makes some sense, just like with the torso. A little bit of continuity with the printing. Very nice look on him. He just had some a basic blaster. Nothing special there. So the first build that we have in this set, we have these small Venom creatures. I'm not really sure exactly what they're supposed to be, but I like the design of them. Very, you know, cool looking. Maybe it's like the Venom form of Spider-Man's, like, you know, slinging webs, and these are just, like, things that he plants things that Venom would plant around town, you know, to spread his, well, Venom. I don't know much about the superhero or supervillains in this set, so I can't really say much as far as continuity as a, you know, Lego counterpart. Um, but these are still interesting. It's very nice to get all these, you know, tentacle-like pieces in this set. I also like how these have spines on them, so you can have it that, you know... You could probably trip up some of the other vehicles in this set, you know, by hitting the tires on them. And, you know, you could fit these in Venom's hands. So you could have as if he's throwing it. Or, you know, using it to attack someone. So, there we have a look with that. And I'm still having a little trouble with standing him up just because of the, the back tentacles on him. You know, you're going to have to bend them a little bit in order to have them stand up. So next up we have Spider-Man's Spider-Cycle. The namesake of the set, but not exactly the, you know, the main build of the set. This is actually a small build, a very easy one to put together. You know, it got a simple design to it, so you have, you know, pairs of wheels on both sides of the vehicle. You know, it stands up very easily. And can roll along just nicely. Um, we also got a play feature with this one. Nothing particularly on the top to note. Except for the sticker. Which is a spider like logo. And very easy placement for him to sit. The only play feature we get with this is you can twist the sides of the wheels. And they'll make it into a hover car. They somewhat show that on the box art. As you saw that before. That it kind of just hovers along the wall. It's kind of a cool feature. I like that. Um, that this vehicle can do that. And these black pieces that hold the wheels on are really good for that sort of feature. I could also imagine them being good for other f uses in other sets. We also get two pairs of webs with Spider-Man, which I actually like a lot. Because I don't have a lot of Spider-Man webs. I only have maybe one or two and this one just adds, you know, much more to what you can do with Spider-Man. Because you could just take him, take the webbing, put him on there, and then swing him across. And that's just with one web. It's pretty long. Just holding it from here to here, that's, that's a pretty long web. Um... Then you could attach the other one on top of it and make it incredibly long if you have enough room in your LEGO City to do so. You can see it's got a lot of length there. It's a little bit harder to swing because it's I have to keep it up a little bit more to swing around. But still very cool that we get these webs and you can use them with Spider-Man while he's driving the spider cycle. So there we have that. You know, not a bad little motorcycle. And then we have the main build of the set. This is Nick Fury's shield car. This is an awesome car, and I have to say, I've always loved the look of this. But even better than that, I love the build of this um, this particular car. I'll, maybe even more than some of the LEGO City cars. This just has an amazing design to it, and a lot of really neat building techniques. It also works well with the building, you know, for all the special features in the car. It's just got a great design to it. Very, definitely good for a convertible if you need one to drive around town. It, you know, even if you're not going to use it as like an agent car. This is one of the features. You lift up the back. 
you lift up this side and then it has a flick fire missile in the back so you could easily shoot that off sometimes it you need a little bit of work angling it if you could put the spoiler down because you can move the spoiler spoiler alert right <laughs> it's a little hard to hit because of that black piece there you could probably move that if you need to because it's Lego, you know, you can move around pieces just to make it a little easier to press it. There we go. That was a little bit better shot. But I've had times before you, when you, when you want to take this up, you don't want to grab it by here. It may seem like an easy way, but sometimes you might have a little bit of trouble and it might break off just the way that it's made. So just be careful with that. Put the spoiler back up. You can see it only fits one minifigure inside. No real room for two, but I'm sure with a little bit of modification, you could try to fit two. It's not really, you know, it's, it'd be kind of hard to fit two in here, but this is definitely a good size car, considering the, you know, the set that it's in. We've also got stickers, one big one on the hood, one on the license plate on the front, and of course, one on the back. It's got some really nice look on even around the sides of it. I like how it actually has a little bit of orange, blue, red. Uh, this see some yellow in there, some white. It's okay to have because most of it's not going to seen from the top of the car. And when you think about a car, you're not going to have every you know every part of the chassis or every part of the car, even on the underside, colored in the same way it's colored on the top. So it's nice just to get the little bits of green on top of here to show that hey, it's a green car. But also has, you know, streaks of black, some gray. And the bottom you don't have to worry about as far as colors. It really teaches you that you don't have to worry about colors all throughout the car. Now, other than its neat design, and what I also like about this a lot, is this window. The way that this window is made is very clever. I'll just show you the inside of the... Inside of the driver's area. You got some computers there. And you got... Very classic computer pieces, by the way. Um, ones I remember from Rock Raiders. And you also have the steering wheel, very easy to fit. A little hard to fit the gun in there, I will admit. That's why they, he's been holding the gun up while driving like that. Because it's really hard to fit it in here. You can probably fit it as best as that. But the window is probably one of my favorite designs in dashboard. Because this whole piece is a clip-on. This is normally a, a large truck type of window you know nice and wide and you know very narrow so you can make it work for a truck they turn it sideways add some pieces on both sides these are supposed to be your rear of your mirrors and you can see where it clips in it's very easy to to clip it in there and it'll stay in there so that's excellent I <laughs> 10 out of 10 for that feature alone that's an amazing thought an amazing building process that you know it fits legally with all the other pieces around it it doesn't squeeze any pieces it doesn't break any pieces it fits just right in here it's amazing now also some things to note on the sides we saw before that these have a little interesting build to them the reason why we have them able to turn and make this a hover car as well as the Spidey Cycle. Very clever how this is done so that you can still have the wheels, you know, you can have the wheels turn to become a hover car, but also have them turn up and then still make them drivable. This is a feature that I've seen tons of times in the past with LEGO games such as Drone Racers or LEGO Racers 1 and 2, and I've always wondered how am I going to build it like that in real life? This is just showing all the kinds of, you know, interesting building techniques that somebody can use for building some really cool cars. Whether or not they're secret agent cars, they'd still make really good ideas. I highly, highly love this set on the whole, but I definitely like the car mostly. I think that's probably the best part of the set. Not that the Spidey Cycle isn't great, but, you know... In terms of Spider-Man cars and vehicles, it doesn't really do much. I mean, this is just a driving car, or driving motorcycle, whatever you want to call it. And then you just have, you know, it has the hover feature. But 
Spider-Man usually doesn't get many good vehicles. In my opinion, he probably shouldn't get any vehicles, but also making it a building set, you're going to have to throw a vehicle in there that you can build. It's also nice to get Venom in here. Um, just a great set. I've liked this set before... Uh, I've liked the set better than the Arctic Batman set. In my opinion, this one just really takes the cake for me. And if you can still find it in stores or find it online... I highly recommend that you do. If you're a Marvel fan, you're going to enjoy this. If you're a superheroes fan, you might enjoy this. You know, if you if you like Avengers, you're going to like this part. You know, these would be just little add-ons for you because, you know, Avengers doesn't necessarily concern with Spider-Man and Venom. But it's still great to have a great $20 set. I just, I can't say any more. I just absolutely love what Lego put into this. Great building design, um, you know, great building techniques, very interesting ones that I've never before seen and would love to use in my own collection, you know, even though it lacks in, you know, some, in some play features, it still has some that are impressive, um, literally 10 out of 10, if I have to rate this, um, it's, it couldn't be better than it already is. Except maybe if we got a little bit more with Venom than just these little spike things. Like if we had like a little, you know, a little wall or a background or something. Or a, a, a small catapult maybe. But it still looks impressive. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time with more LEGO Set Reviews.